How you guys doing? This is Andrew at Flurry PB, and this is a quick product video, I guess. Uh, these are freak inserts that I made probably eight years ago, and I sold them on eBay. A little bit of them. They weren't uh, a huge seller, but they weren't really advertised either. Uh, these are titanium. I forget the grade, but it's high grade titanium with a honed bore. So I honed them all to a specific size range. And these are the ones I have left. I'm gonna finish them out. Uh, they got a dust finish on them, I gotta clean them off. And then I got to cut a, uh, or vinyl cut a indicator, a size indicator, and then I'm going to polish that in on these. And I'll bring you guys through the process of that. But it's a hone finish with a ball hone. They're chamfered on the ends. And, you know, they shoot great. Uh, did I just... Oh, I gotta recheck the size on that. So I'm gonna go to the process of how we check the sizes on these. Uh, obviously, it's pretty hard to check an internal bore. Well, it's not hard. It's just different. You don't use a set of calipers to do that. And... Basically, the sizes I have here are these are 699, which is a little big, obviously not a little big, very big. But uh, these are interesting because if you're trying to make a lot of sparks, these probably make mo the most sparks. Do you want to do like a little preface first? Hi, this is Drew from PB4. Nah. We'll just, uh... If you're not familiar with titanium barrels, they develop like a static charge in them, especially when your paint's a little dirty or you're playing in like a dusty environment and you have like a speed feed and a little bit of grits getting through. They develop a static charge and then every once in a while they'll flash a spark as they're shooting, which is kind of neat. It's just a neat thing with titanium. Uh, it's not the reason I made these. I made these because versus other freak inserts, these are basically indestructible. I mean, they're significantly harder to crush than the aluminum. And even the stainless inserts, they are harder to crush than the stainless inserts available. Plus, they're lighter than the stainless inserts. It's a little heavier than the aluminum, but lighter than the stainless. So that's a, a good little benefit of them. But this is 699. These are 684, which is a good size. And then these are 677s which is a very neat size, especially if you're underboring or you have a cocker or something like that and you want to get a real tight grip on it. So those are 677s. Seven, seven. So hopefully those are interesting to people. I'm going to bring you over to... Uh, well, I'll bring the pin gauges over here. Basically, this is a half-inch carbide end mill. This shank is a half-inch absolutely on the money. This is a pin gauge. This is a verified 0.199 pin gauge for my pin gauge set. So I put them together and you grab one. Did I put the wrong ones here? I grab the wrong pile. This pile, that's why. You put them together and you want that nice, tight, hard fit. You don't want to shove it in there hard because it's going to deform this, but you want this nice, tight friction fit. If I up this pin gauge to 0 0.2, which is this, it's, it, well, I can force it in, but it doesn't want to go in. It's going to deform the bore because it's so thin that it doesn't want to go in. 
If I go to 0.198, it slides in, but it's too loose. Like I got a little wiggle. So I'm very confident that this is within a few ten thousandths of 0.6. 699 this is 0 0.5 plus 0.199 is 0.699 so I think I so I have six of those I have four of these which these are So this pile is the 684. This is again the half inch and this is a 0.184 gauge pin. So that's the 684 pile and then this one, I think this is wrong. I don't think it's supposed to be there. No, it's tight. Let me grab the 77. So this is uh, the 0 0.177 pin and the half. And that's this pile here. So that's 0 0.677, 684, and uh, 699. Shut the pin gauges so I'm going to dusty. And yeah, I'm going to just clean these up real quick, give them a wash, because they're a little dirty, they've been sitting around for a while. And, uh, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> and yeah, uh, we'll talk about the finish. I used a, originally a, a brake hone, or like a, a hone you would use for like a lifter valley or something like that on a car, just to make sure I was running true and straight. In it and the bore was straight because if you look down the bore there's not a lot of wobble it's a very consistent finish in there so it's a very fine brake hone or a uh, lifter hone i guess and then i used a flex hone to finish it out a super fine grade flex hone to make these just buttery smooth inside put a little chamfer on the edges just to ease the transition of a paintball going in. That was with a uh, three quarter inch uh, round over end mill bit. And then I turned the size down to, they're a little under uh, a three quarters of an inch. I forget the exact size of these, but they're a touch under three quarters of an inch when uh, just the way that they're, they're set up. And yeah, let me get some sticker cutouts printed and I'll show you guys what I'm doing with that. All right, so that took a little longer than uh, I anticipated, which makes everything. Basically, the way this works is I polished up a section of this. Then I put a, uh, I use my vinyl cutter to cut out sandblasting masker. So you cut out the 699 and sandblasting masker, put it on, and then you blast this area again real lightly just to put it on, then peel that off. And you got a very permanent way to put this on there where this is, you know, that ain't coming off. It's the sandblasted surface and the polished surface of titanium. Catch the light pretty good there. And yeah, so I have five of the 677s, four of the 684s, and four of the 699s. So I was 
planning on making a couple little sets out of them. Uh, I'm 3D printing up some holders right now. I'll show you guys that in a bit. And I'll make four sets that are going to be for sale. This can be a very limited quantity thing, obviously. I'm just trying to get in the urge to get into some hard parts again. So this is my first attempt at it. We'll see how this goes. One set I'm going to give to my uh, my best customer. Uh, explain a little more as I got the, the packaging together. But one set's going to go to him for free because, uh, you know, reward the people that are using my products the most. And that's great. So, and he advertises my stuff a lot, basically, because he's a, uh, he's an airsmith. He does a lot of videos on YouTube and he buys more of my, more of my boards than anyone else at this point. So I'm going to give him a set. I, he was a freak in, uh, all of his shooting videos too. So I think that will work well for him. So I'm going to give him a set and there's going to be three for sale. And I'm going to keep the, the remaining six, seven, seven for myself right now. I've sold these before, like eight years ago. I think I sold about 20 of them. I might have had another size or two as well back then. But they were sold on eBay. Wasn't a lot of fanfare. Sold them a long time ago as individuals. I'm going to sell them as sets now. And I'll get some more information together when I get the 3D print done tonight. All right, guys. I have the finished products here. Uh, this is the second attempt at this video because I messed up my sound. But uh, they fit in the cases, barely, but they do. I'll pull one out. This is what we came up with here. As I drop it. I should manage to get my logo. I don't know if you guys can see that. I managed to get my logo printed on these. Pretty happy with that. you guys the the polished in sizing try to catch the light see the finish inside with my hand I'm very happy with these I, I'm very happy how the sets came out Here's a old stainless freak back. It's a little sticky. The other one's a little jelly, but if it's a regular freak. It'll come out. A little side by side of the finish. How can I show this? Side by side, the finish between them, very consistent. Something like that. Let's get worse. So. That old ring is losing it. Put it back in its set. Back in this case. This case far cry from being the right case for this, but it's what I have. And I have three of these that are going to be for sale with this video. The last one is going to uh, go to my best customer for 2022 as a, as a gift. And yeah, I'm very happy with how these turned out. Just gotta keep looking at them for right now. You know, I was fortunate with a 3D printer. Uh, I, I got the 3D printer because my son is really into Brio trains and Thomas the Train and 
all kind of model train stuff and you know i thought it was i i'm into brio trains too at this point i i liked it when i was his age when i was three loved thomas the train when i was three and i was the uh, george carlin era thomas the train he's more of the post alec baldwin era i guess but yeah carlin era i remember the ringo star stuff from way back when top of hat was the fat conductor uh, so yeah i was into that and i figured he got really excited when I said we can make our own Brio stuff. We got a printer. So I got a printer and I figured it shows him and exposes him a little bit to manufacturing and, and doing stuff. And, you know, since we got the printer, it's been nonstop every night. It's printing Brio stuff. So it was very lucky and fortunate that I was able to sneak away from him and uh, get these printed up. But yeah, they came out really nice. The, the inserts came out really nice. This is probably going to be a very limited run, guys. I'm not planning on doing a big batch of these anytime soon but yeah if you're interested in them they they do cool stuff they are nice inserts sandra at flurry pb and that's it for this one thank you